ask. Save our republic. It sounds extremely hyperbolic to put it in those terms. That the fabric of the United States is in peril because of economic mismanagement. Because Doge, the Elon Musk, Vivek Ramaswamy department agency is essentially looking for economic mismanagement. They're looking for government waste. And that is really the whole purview of the department. As far as I know, perhaps this article will tell me different, but my assumption is that the Department of Government Efficiency and Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy and everybody else involved in that are really only looking for waste. They're looking for, hey, there's three departments doing what really could easily be done by one. There are 18 different people working on this same job and they're all overlapping. None of them are contributing anything specifically, you know, individual. This could all be done by, you know, two people. Really only two people need to be looking at, you know, fisheries management. But we've got 500 people doing it. That's good to cut it back, of course. But does that equal righting all of the wrongs in terms of the general fiscal policy and economic management of the country. Because while it is seemingly hyperbolic to say that the economy is the country, history tells us that that is essentially true. Countries can weather wars, invasions, all kinds of stuff, but two things really kill them. First is economic forces. They can be internal. Usually they are because external economic realities are kind of difficult to look into in a massively historical context and all that kind of things. But the second one is just a general sort of a loss of confidence. You're just, you know, a country's just so demoralized that it just stops wanting to be a country and then just dissolves into other stuff. Generally speaking, that is, of course, preceded by economic problems. So, Doge's chances are slim, but it might be our only hope. Congress and the president show no interest in cutting government. Maybe outsiders can get it done. Now, I'm assuming the president they're referring to is Biden, but it could possibly be Trump as well, because it, as we are all aware, Trump really did not cut government waste expenditure, anything, in his first term. Maybe in his second one, he's more open to it in terms of, you know, a policy position, but... We shall see. President-elect Donald Trump's new Department of Government Efficiency, Doge, is getting a lot of buzz. Much of it tentatively hopeful. Agreed. There's a good reason for that. Untested though it is, the idea of handing responsibility for dismantling government bureaucracy, slashing excess regulations, and cutting wasteful expenditures to a couple of wealthy tech bros might work where nothing else has. This is important. Every other sort of government efficiency task force that has been tried, and there have been a couple, nothing gets done. Not all of the recommendations that they give, essentially none of them
of them are ever followed. There's a couple reasons for that. First, the task force recommendations usually are done by government insiders, and they are usually looking to keep their job in the government. So they're not going to make recommendations for things, and they're certainly not going to fight for them if it might impact themselves, their friends, their buddies, their, you know, their circle, and therefore, eh, you know, hey, we can recommend that you do this, but if you don't, eh, we gave it our best shot, we sure tried. The other side of it is the political will necessary to go forward with this. This is, again, this is something where you'd say outsiders, someone who is not looking for a continued 56 year future in politics as their career could actually make beneficial changes that sink them with the rest of the political class. They'll never be reelected again. Good, great, awesome. This is, I mean, people like to tout the Australian gun ban. Yeah, guess what? I'm pretty sure all of the people that went through with that, even though it's now a lauded piece of legislation the Western world over, all of those people involved with it never worked in politics again. They got, yeah, they were thrown out. Now we can debate about the actual goodness of that bill if we want to, but a large sea change like that, generally not good for the life of a politician. Given that the federal government hasn't balanced its books in decades, absolutely true, and the budget deficit just keeps growing and adding to the national debt, it might be our only hope of avoiding catastrophe. This is true. We've seen this in other states. Look at California. It took Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, there was a recall election. He was brought in because of economic mismanagement. There he had to slash budgets. You look at Javier Malay is the more pertinent modern example. He had to cut enormous amounts of stuff to get us back to, to get them back to some form of fiscal solvency. Hopefully we go in that direction and we're able to do it via not just cutting government inefficiency, but some of the things that are actually contributing to our debt. In fiscal year 2024, which ended on September 30th, the federal budget deficit totaled $1.8 trillion, an increase of $138 billion, or 8%, from the shortfall recorded in the previous year reports the Congressional Budget Office. If that sounds familiar, it should. You've heard something similar before year after year, though the numbers tend to become increasingly dire as time goes on. It's been a very long time since the federal government managed to confine its spending to what it takes in. And this is a massive problem. Why wouldn't you want a balanced budget? Why, like, just, I understand that it's happened forever, and this would be something that you could look at from the, you know, government efficiency doge standpoint of ever-growing, ever-increasing budgets are in large part due to the fact of that's, this is how we allocate our budget. People waste money so that they keep getting a bigger budget. They keep getting the budget that, you know, sometime in the future they might need. The Department of Defense, some year in the future, might need their full budget of whatever it is. You know, let's call it $100 billion. They need $100 billion 10 years in the future for some huge, giant thing. The nine years from here and now, they don't. They could easily go by with 10. But if they say they only need 10 that year, that they need 100, they won't get it. it. Seems silly, and it is. In the last 50 years, the federal government budget has run a surplus four times. Most
most recently in 2001, the U.S. Treasury cheerfully concedes on its National Deficit Explainer page. In fact, since the start of fiscal year 2025, which began, let's remember, last month, the federal government has spent $257 billion, more than it has collected. That's $191 billion more than the roughly $67 billion deficit our federal government had run up by this time last year. Whoa. This is depressing. The Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis puts annual deficits in graph form for easy viewing. Even if you ignore the insanity of pandemic years 2020s spending and deficit, which was crazy, there's a steady widening of the gap between revenues and expenditures over the last decade. Yeah, I mean, again, this is the one thing that conservatives and libertarians absolutely have real problems with Donald Trump about is the massive amount of spending that he definitely did oversee and, you know, the arguments of whether that was a good move, even if it was a weirdly popular move. It's just, it's not great. But again, get past it. It was a moment of insanity. The continuement of that insanity outside of that moment of crisis is the real craziness that we really should be looking at. What's especially impressive, for a certain value of impressive, is that federal revenues were up by 11%, or 479 billion dollars from 2023. That 1.8 trillion dollar deficit was accomplished by increasing spending by dramatically more than the rise in revenue, 617 billion dollars. It seems that no matter how much money the U.S. government collects, it spends more. Okay, let's think. The federal revenues were up by 11%, or 479 billion dollars from 2023. There's a 1.8 trillion dollar deficit. So let's be honest here. If you had a balanced budget, that, if you had had a balanced budget before this, in 2023, that bump of 11%, $479 billion, if this is how they're calculating it, you could have paid off our entire deficit in four years. If you had basically, if you'd kept that level of growth, you know, or if you just not even growth, if you had stuck at exactly that same amount of revenue for four years, you could have paid off the debt and balanced it. So you know what? The idea of the deficit being, you know, just forever debt, we're never going to be able to pay it off. Clearly we can't. Clearly the, the numbers are there. You can do it. We can ostensibly do it over the course of a presidency. Trump could, with, you know, probably some deep cuts and some, you know, increases in revenue, which I think he's he's on track for revenue, no problem. But the cuts as well, you could pay off the deficit. And I mean, I can't even imagine what that would do for, you know, the world economy, not just the U.S. economy. That's going to that's gonna blow up everybody. That's going to be such an incredible thing if it comes across. And again, optimism, optimism, hope. Doge, hope, if the federal government were a shopaholic family member, we'd have held an intervention years ago. Yeah, maybe. And here's where tentative hopefulness comes in. A pair of wealthy tech entrepreneurs can stage the intervention that the federal government so obviously needs. I am pleased to announce that the... Oh, this is Trump saying it. I am pleased to announce that the... I can't do it. Whispering voice. I'm pleased to announce that the great Elon Musk, great in capital G, working in conjunction with American patriot Vivek Ramaswamy, will lead the Department of Government Efficiency. Doge. President elect Trump announced November 12th on the Truth Social platform. Together, these two wonderful Americans will pave the way for my administration to dismantle government bureaucracy slash 
excess regulations, cut wasteful expenditures, and restructure federal agencies. All good things. All good things. Trump specified that to drive this kind of drastic change, the Department of Government Efficiency will provide advice and guidance from outside of government. This is potentially a good move because there are some government regulations that if you create a intergovernmental panel, they have some sort of like oversight over these things and that can really throw a wrench in these kinds of initiatives to cut back on things. Because obviously, yeah, a government employee doesn't want you to take his job away and if he can oversee that and slow it down, they're going to do it. Not wonderfully fantastic for everybody else involved, but for that person, I get it. It's your job. It's your livelihood. That's how you put food on the table. You're going to do whatever you can to keep it. I get it. That means that Doge, and yes, you have to wonder if we're being pranked given Musk's connection to Dogecoin, won't have any power to actually enforce its will. It will just counsel the president and those inside government on potential improvements in efficiency and cuts in spending and waste. But working outside the government means Doge, Musk, and Ramaswamy are also freed from the government way of doing things with all its red tape and bureaucracy. No perfect solutions, only trade-offs. This is a good trade-off. This is a good trade-off. All actions of the Department of Government Efficiency will be posted online for maximum transparency. Also fantastic. Elon Musk posted on X. Anytime the public thinks we are cutting something important or not cutting something wasteful, just let us know. We will also have a leaderboard from most insanely dumb spending of your tax dollars. That's going to be fantastic. That's going to be epic. That's going to be unbelievable. I cannot wait for that. That is going to be... I mean... That's going to be the hit show of the season. There's no doubt about it. This will be both extremely tragic and extremely entertaining. Yep. In October, Musk insisted at least $2 trillion could be cut from the federal budget. That's probably accurate. That suggests he's not interested in just trimming a bit at the margins or slightly slowing the rate of Leviathan's growth. Absolutely. Chances are slim. What are the alternatives? Can Doge work? If I were a betting man, and I am, I'd say there's no chance in hell. I wouldn't be that far, but yeah, I'd say the, you know, the odds are against it, for sure. Without the power to enforce its will, the most sincere and ambitious Doge recommendations will run up against the complete lack of political will in Washington, D.C. to tackle the cost of financially uns sustainable entitlement programs such as Medicare and Social Security and National Defense. Very true. These are wildly unpopular things to try to cut. Again, outsiders in government at all levels who are not looking for political re-elections very possibly could make this happen, and I'm a little bit more hopeful than this person, than the author of this article. I am a little bit more hopeful, to be perfectly honest. Programs which make up the majority of the budget, this is true. And I mean, you could even go into it a little bit more granular and like the specifics of the amount of money Medicare spends. It's like 80% on end-stage renal disease, people that need dialysis, you know, three times a week. That's like the majority of Medicare spending. And again, it's like, that's life-saving stuff, so how much of that stuff can you cut? Even if you were like, hey, we're going to cut everything non-life-threatening. Okay, you're still running into this Medicare stuff. You're still running into, you know, these people that need dialysis. That kind of means that you can't cut that, which means that the majority of Medicare spending can't be cut which is probably true, but I think you can sort of rearrange how the payouts happen and these types of things to actually, like, just systemically reduce the costs of these things. We'll see. And again, this would be something that would, we would want to look at.
look into and we're going to be following with a lot of interest. That will allow net interest on the debt the federal government has already run up to consume an ever-growing portion of the federal budget until there's nothing else. This is true. This is the, you know, the amount of debt and the, is, these issues with these things. But again, you were currently growing faster than the interest and that's the thing. So if you were to pare back spending, slack, if you were to just not increase spending, we'd be able to probably pay it off. But what other option is there? Yep. The Democratic and Republican Party platforms both promise to protect Social Security and Medicare and boast their commitment to a bigger military, Republicans, and historic investments in America's military industrial base, Democrats. That doesn't leave much room for reining in spending through normal legislative channels. And the stakes are high. True. Under current policy, the United States has about 20 years for corrective action, after which no amount of future tax increases or spending cuts could avoid the government defaulting on its debt, whether explicitly or implicitly. Economist Jagadish Gokali and Kent Smetters wrote for the Penn Wharton budget model last year. They added that this is the best case scenario and the window for balancing the federal government's books could dramatically shrink if people lose faith, confidence that the U.S. government will ever address its excesses. This is an issue. Now, that being said, even if the government does default on the debt and these types of things, I mean, absolutely bad things were to happen. But it's not 100% the end of a line. It's just you're hitting rock bottom, right? You know, you're hitting rock bottom. You can still go further down. You can still keep digging. But that would be the place where it's like, all right, you, you got to start climbing. If the U.S. government defaulted, Moody's analytics concluded the blow to the economy would be cataclysmic. The dollar would lose value. Financial markets would fall, wiping out $10 trillion in household wealth. Jobs and businesses would be lost. Nothing new there, I've got to be honest. Prosperity would plunge, and it would be bad. Agreed. So even if the likelihood of Doge, under the guidance of Rusk and Ramaswamy, succeeded in making the federal government remotely affordable is slim, it might be our best hope. A rotating cast of lawmakers and presidents let spending outpace revenue for decades and show absolutely no interest in changing their habits. Maybe. Just maybe. Outsiders can get it done. It will certainly be interesting watching them try. And I would like to add, it will be very, very heartening to watch people try to do this. And to see the force that they can bring against career politicians with entrenched interests. At the very least, this is bringing the fight into the public domain, as opposed to having it done behind closed doors. This is going to bring it out, and the same thing with like RFK Jr. being appointed Homeland, or Health, Health, Health and Human Services Director, Czar, however it's, whatever the title is. This is going to bring out the idea of, you know, Big Pharma doing bad stuff. I think they do good stuff too. But all of those shady deals, bring it into the light. Let us see it. Let us decide where we want to spend our time, our money, our attention. And give us the ability to fight these things without, you know, a blindfold over us. Without, you know, us being, you know, blind, deaf, and dumb. This gives us a legitimate fighting chance, not to mention, I think this does give us stepping off points in the future to continue, you know, new fronts into this fight of actually attempting to rein in these economic problems before they become, way before they become completely unsolvable, but even before they become mass 
massively costly and disastrous to, you know, people in their day to day. That is, that's my optimistic take. Thank you for your time and attention. Good luck in all your endeavors. And with that, I shall say...